the session. Cool, so the session is being recorded. Otherwise, here's our list of uh, pairs that our set list, or at least my set list of pairs. So from the set list of pairs, what I've done is I did go through all, well, 28, not 34, but all 28 pairs. And then obviously I found four cell setups because I just decided now I'm gonna remove AJ. I feel like AJ is gonna require some patience but four cell bias setups, and then obviously five uh, bullish setups that we're gonna go through. Um, otherwise, let's just start off with a uh, AUD CAD and do the things to be done, do the things to be done. So let's make this full screen. There we go. So AUD CAD, just looking at why are we on a weekly? Let's just go back to daily. Looking at a higher time frame. So, so AUD CAD is back on my watch list. Unfortunately, I do want to buy AUD CAD, but not where it is right now. So I am sell bias, unfortunately, on AUD CAD, where I want to be so bullish bias. But otherwise, we do have this momentum. We've got a corrective structure. Obviously, our intention is to trade in the direction of this momentum here. We're hoping that, okay, cool, maybe we'll come all the way to the 90% rule of this overall um, whatever structure is forming over here. But if we just look at the most recent price action and figure out where we are within this structure, uh, cool. Just looking at just the most recent uh, price action, what we can see is that we're at this resistance trend line over here. Clearly, we've broken above and closed above this resistance trend line. We've also broken and closed below this resistance trend line. That is showing us that price action is being corrective around this level of structure. Yes, it's a resistance trend line is a level of structure, dynamic level of structure. So obviously we're expecting some sort of a corrective structure to form inside of this area here. Yes, we do wanna be, maybe be part of all of this bullish momentum right here, but look at where we are context, we add resistance, all of this stuff. We're coming towards this resistance area here, which was the last place a whole bunch of sellers came in that managed to break an important support. So obviously, if we just look at like weekly structure, whatever, this is the last major support, this is the last major resistance. And obviously we had that break of structure there. So this is the last place where we see evidence of weekly sellers being involved. And obviously we know that weekly structure will then be bullish if we break above this high over here. So otherwise, just coming into the most recent price action, yes, maybe we do wanna be bullish, but right now the structure is not warranting us or it does, it's not giving us the opportunity to make such a decision. So, um, okay, let's just delete all of this stuff before we go on to the lower time frames just so it doesn't distract us. Let me go down to the four hour. Cool. So on the four hour, just looking at the most recent structure, yes, we've been bullish. Uh, we've been inside of all of this here, but nonetheless, if we're looking at just four hour structures, clear we broke some four hour lows over there with this momentum here, obviously giving us that reason to be sell bias last week. Um, but yeah, this kind of just ruined everything for us. And ever since we had this, if we just take a look at the major structure, things are still bullish. Why? Because we had this resistance. After this resistance, price gave us this extreme low. After this extreme low, we just literally got a new, excuse me, a new higher high. As much as yes, we can see that price didn't break above impulsively or whatever the case is, it's still a new higher high. It's showing us, yes, we, we understand already, or at least we got context from how price was around here. We got context that whatever we're looking at here, we should be looking at some sort of a corrective structure because we already got indication from a daily time frame that price is being corrective in and around this region. Now, obviously we can do a couple of things here. We can add a resistance trend line and maybe look for a third touch or whatever the case is. But what I chose to do just to be safe is because price is already at this, this, this resistance area, right? If sellers are gonna come in, they're gonna come in somewhere around here. Price doesn't have to stay below here. Price can break above, whatever the case is, break back below. If that's the situation, if we break above this high and we break back below, then we'll look for that reduced risk entry. We'll make, make our lives very simple. We'll look for a reduced risk entry. Otherwise, this is what we're expecting if price does whatever. That's, this is not information that we have on the chart. Information that we do have on the chart though, is we've got a point of interest up here. I don't wanna force resistance and make us start to look for trades inside of here when there is no POI if we look left on a four hour for us to look for a good trade somewhere around here. So what we're gonna do is the next four hour POI is somewhere up here close to the resistance um, that high that we spoke about where we saw the extreme high that we spoke about. We've got a nice bearish engulfing there. Obviously nice momentum shift. That's where we see evidence of sellers. That's where we can look to sell. 
So what I want to do on um, Aussie Cat is I want to kind of just be very reactive. Unless we get a setup inside of here, I'm going to take reduced risk entries. There's no way we can look for a risk entry and just assume that maybe price is just going to reject from here or whatever the case is. Until we add our point of interest, if we do find an entry anywhere inside of here that completes or whatever, it's going to be a reduced risk entry. It will never be a risk entry. 100%, we're 100% bearish bias on um, AUD CAD. Let's go on to some AJ. I think we should just, cause I did decide to remove AJ. I guess AJ is just a nice reflection on last week cause she gave us beautiful trades. I even realized that maybe we closed that prematurely but whatever the case is we had, we were at supply. Our scale in was right next to TP, cool. All and well, we followed rules. But yeah, so the reason why I'm removing this off the, off the analysis is because I don't see any four hour, cause yes, we wanna maybe primarily trade off our four hour POIs. We don't have any four hour POIs or any momentum shifts inside of here. So we know that price is still moving, right? The only momentum shift that we have is up here, literally where we entered our first set of positions. So if we wanna find a safe entry, the safest thing is for us to wait for price action to come all the way back up here, which obviously we can see that price is still involved in this momentum. We have not even started to correct or whatever as yet. So just because of that, price could just keep falling over the course of next week. I don't know. But until I see a corrective structure forming, I felt like it's not worth us adding on, um, adding on the watch list for next week. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove AJ. We're not going to look at AJ until we find a corrective structure that allows us to get back into this momentum here that we exited. Cool. Let's go on to some AU. So AU is basically just, we're going to just repeat. I, I won't spend a lot of time on AU because I didn't delete any of the analysis. We're just repeating what we said last week. So on AU, higher time frame, we do have momentum. We've got a corrective structure. We're expecting higher time frame since we've broken back into this structure over here that maybe we can obviously continue to the upside that momentum maybe wants to just follow through in the direction of this outside of this corrective structure. So that's kind of what we're looking at higher time frame. Higher time frame, we know we wanna be buyers because we're inside of this corrective structure and we wanna trade in the direction of the momentum that brought us into this corrective structure, right? Which is obviously to the upside. Um, let's delete this before we look at the most recent price action. Most recent price action, we are still inside of a seller's market. I'm just recapping what we said last week. We see lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. So obviously this is our last resistance. This is the last support that was broken by the sellers that came in at this resistance. And as long as we are inside of this impulsive move to the downside, we do understand that it's still possibly a seller's market. So we can still find those sell bias trading opportunities. We do know on the other hand that we're gonna be trading against obviously this higher time frame momentum that we observe, the weekly structure. So what we're gonna do is when we do involve ourselves inside cells, we're not looking to hold the cells until breaking structures and whatever the case is, because we understand the narrative of the higher time frames. Going down onto a four hour. So four hour, obviously we've got our POI marked out there. We've got this momentum over here, just marked out a POI. Wherever I see a bearish engulfing, that's a momentum shift I wanna trade where I see other sellers selling but the key thing is that when we see the bearish engulfing obviously the bearish engulfing must do something does it break a level of structure what is the resulting move from that bearish engulfing but otherwise let's come back here so otherwise most recent price action yes we did see price action breaking back into that weekly structure nice inverse head and shoulders price rounded off we gained momentum as we were pushing back into the structure but after we got into the structure, what is this? This is a nice corrective structure. Every high we broke above, broke back below, broke above, broke back below. Obviously, we're waiting to pay attention to see what's going to happen here. But we've clearly seen there's been some price, some, some corrective price action. Price has been decelerating as we've been moving to the upside. Higher highs, higher lows, but in a corrective manner. Because we're in a corrective manner or we have, we can see evidence of corrective price action, we're looking for a corrective structure. Corrective structure, I've observed this. We've got our resistance trend line over here. Obviously, first touch, second touch. Price is at the third touch. We've got our point of interest over there. All I'm looking for, or my main, my main focus now, on Monday when markets open, what I want to look for is, has price action broken above this resistance? Even by one pip, if we break above this line, 
even by one pip, then I can't be looking to trade risk entries to try and find a sniper somewhere inside of here below. Because I can clearly see that if price breaks above here, then we can clearly see that whoever the sellers are that are inside of this momentum shift, they're not here taking action inside of here in the most recent price action. Something else is going on here. So otherwise, what we're going to be doing is, since we already saw price already moving away from this POI, our, our eyes are just focused on a corrective structure. If we drop down onto a one hour, we'd see that this resistance over here, price broke above this resistance and broke back below, giving us indication that we are having corrective price action in this area. What we're going to do on Monday is simple. All we're looking for is a corrective structure, be it an ascending structure, be it a double top, be it a head and shoulders, whatever price gives us, as long as it's a reversal structure and price does not break above here, then we'll look for risk entries. If price action breaks above this resistance, then risk entries are off the table for us. We're looking for reduced risk entries. Done and dusted. Bearish bias for AU. Obviously, we're still inside of this corrective structure. We're looking for that downside continuation. I hope this plays out because this looks like a nice setup. Um, and if we do get involved, we're not going to look to to ride this very expensively. I'm not even going to look to target this 90% rule of the structure here. Maybe the lowest we'll go is at this low over here. Probably maybe the lowest we look to ride this, but yeah. Let's do the things to be done, AU. So otherwise, let's just do all of the bearish bias setups just so that we know all the pairs we're selling, then we'll get to all of the bullish the, the bullish pairs. So US30, US30, I am still sell bias on US30. I hope I'm not forcing this. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find out next week. We'll find out next week. And otherwise, we're not looking, we're not looking at the market to find out whether we're right or wrong. We're looking at the numbers. The numbers won't lie to us. At the end of the week, at the end of the month, the numbers won't lie. Otherwise, we've got resistance over here. We can see that deceleration towards this resistance. We're not looking at the daily. I don't think it's necessary. We see obviously yes, momentum coming towards this resistance, but price decelerated after we saw this corrective deceleration. We see sellers involving themselves, nice momentum to the downside. This sellers managed to break levels of structure, obviously. So I know that whoever sell is whoever sold inside here, they're more than the buyers that came in here, more than the buyers that came in here. Did we break this low? No, we didn't. Cool. So these buyers are still inside of the market, right? Cool. So otherwise, we've got these sellers involved. We're inside of this momentum. Where am I? I'm at resistance. Why not if it just makes sense? So I'm still going to be looking for, for those uh, short trading opportunities. What I'm going to be doing is just being reactive to the structures. So let's just go down onto the one hour. You guys can see we're inside of this POI. I've got the high of our POI marked out. So obviously, if we break above the high, risk entries are off the table. We're only looking for reduced risk entries because we can't be expecting whoever was involved in here to be involved in here if price action breaks above where these people decided to involve themselves. That's the, that's the logic that we're using. Reason and logic. Very simple trading, trading strategy. <laughs> everything is simple. When you understand why you're doing something, everything else just becomes so much more simpler. But otherwise, what I'm going to be looking at, since we had this ascending structure, my assumptions were that maybe this was going to be the end of this ascending structure cool we can see it's not the news adds a whole level of complexity last week's news adds so much complexity but I, what i see is what i'm going to function off price did break above here and break back below so obviously corrective price action so what i'm going to do is just look for a corrective structure if there is a corrective structure that's forming inside of here hopefully we don't break above this high but if we do break above this high then all we're doing is looking for reduced risk entries only. Reduced risk entries mean that we want to see price action break structure in the direction we're looking to trade first before we find an entry. That's the only difference. For a risk entry, we don't need to see price action breaking structure in our direction first. Um, yeah, but for reduced risk entry, we do. So otherwise, um, there's one more, one, two, three. There's one more cell that we're going to be looking at. Euro AD, Euro AD, cool. So let's just look at Euro AD quickly. Let's go up to a daily. So Euro AD, I feel like we, we maybe we it's not really necessary for us to look at this overall high time frame structure, or whatever. But all I'm functioning of Euro AD higher time frame is moving sideways. Like more than anything, excuse me, more than anything, we're moving sideways. So all I'm doing is I'm just focusing on the structures that I see forming, and we're gonna try and find probabilities to trade these structures. 
Cool. So here, momentum, higher time frame is to the downside. Higher time frame, momentum is to the downside. Yes, we did break this resistance, but cool, we're just trading what we see. So obviously we can, we already have indication of corrective price action price broke above this high. And obviously now we've just broken back below this high. So we've been corrective inside of here. That's why we're looking at focusing on corrective price action. If we just drop down onto a four hour, all we're gonna do is we're gonna observe the nature of what happened and the structure for us to be able to make our decision. Yes, we didn't see very convinced sellers happening over there. Obviously, price action was making lower lows, lower highs, but in a corrective manner. And then all of a sudden, we see the sellers showing that, yes, we were inside of this market. We were just working, you guys, hiding all of our orders. Nice. They got an edge to protect the money. Cool. One day, we'll find out their edge and we'll be able to get that money. But otherwise, for now, they hit their orders, corrective structure to the downside. They exploded. What we see is they broke this low. So we have first indication higher time frame corrective price action and then obviously we have a new lower low and we have momentum where did this momentum come from i have a nice big bearish engulfing over there i've got a corrective structure inside of here my corrective structure's got a first touch a second touch so obviously i can be expecting some sort of a third touch and i do have a point of interest that in case maybe there's a manipulation whatever the case is there's my sniper entry area over there that's where i see other evidence of sellers these sellers managed to break this low. They managed to break that low. So obviously there's someone that's more than whoever bought from there or wherever else, whichever other lows we bought from. So we're going to just look for a follow through of this momentum here. Not going to be too extravagant because obviously we know price action is moving sideways, higher time frame. So obviously if we do get in on this or somewhere in and around this POI, let's just look to be very conservative and we'll just target the low. And that's about it. So we are nice and sell buys on Euro AUD. We're just waiting for that third touch or termination at our POI to find an entry to try and sell um, Euro AUD in the direction of this momentum that just broke structure. So those are the four pairs that we're going to be looking to sell over the course of next week. Let's look at the pairs that we might be looking to buy. So I packed these pairs. Wait, let me see. Yes, I packed these pairs nicely because they all kind of look the same. <laughs> they kind of look the same so gbp nzd if you guys remember same pair that we were looking at last week so i'm not going to waste a lot of time in speaking about this pair we've got a level of structure that we've broken below that obviously at a future date in time future point in time we can come back to retest we've got momentum over here that we're trying to trade in the direction of and then obviously we see price action coming back to the support and we're decelerating as we're coming back to the support we've got a first touch we've got a second touch what we're waiting for, what we were waiting for last week and what we're still waiting for this week is for price action to break below this low. And obviously, once we break below this low, we are looked, we're focusing on those reversal structures for upside momentum. We don't know how the reversal structure will form, what it will look like, but obviously, we know simple double bottom, inverse head and shoulders, descending structure. Those are only three, uh, three chart patterns that I'll be looking to trade or that I trade because they're the simplest for me to spot and I'll build some sort of an edge with those. But otherwise, yeah, three structures. If we don't find any one of those three, then we're not going to be taking action. Let's just wait for that third touch and then we look to buy. GBP AUD, if you look at the structure, looks almost quite similar. Maybe let me look at, let me show you the higher time frame structure. Higher time frame structure, level of structure, a lot of manipulation to the bottom, and then momentum to the upside. GBP AUD, we've got a sort of a level of structure over here. We'll call this the manipulation to the bottom, but nonetheless, this is the level of structure that obviously we've broken below and that at a future date in time, we can come back to retest. Why is this stuff not loading here on my charts? The analysis is not loading. Oh, there it is. There it is. Cool. So this is the level of structure that obviously we broke below and we can be retesting at a future date in time. On a four hour, we've got, so last week we were looking for sales, but obviously we were waiting for a nice proper retest and price didn't come back and retest. So we missed that trade, but we can find upside continuation now. So we've switched the bias. Obviously we're coming down to support. It makes more sense to be a buyer. All we've done is at our level of structure, we found a beautiful momentum shift, nice big bullish engulfing below all of these lows. All we're going to do is just wait for price action to come tap in here. Then we're looking for our bullish bias trading opportunities. Whatever reversal structure forms inside of here that terminates at our POI, that will be reason enough for us to look for our upside continuation. Let's move on to New Zealand dollar CAD. So New Zealand dollar CAD and New Zealand dollar USD, the setups look almost exactly the same. 
So let's not involve ourselves in both, but let's look for the more clear one that gives us, obviously more clear might mean better probabilities because cool, the, our decision-making is more obvious. I don't mean more clear as in the whole world can see that this, I mean more clear in, a, in accordance with our rules that this meets our entry criteria better than the other pair meets our entry criteria. But nonetheless, we have, I even removed and stopped looking at New Zealand dollar cab. But since we are in some extreme momentum, and obviously this just shows us that we're in a markup. Maybe let's not expect a huge correction. If we are in a huge correction, then we'll take our L and we'll look to buy lower. That's no problem at all because we know that risk to reward ratio will carry us through those Ls, doesn't matter. But what I'm gonna do is, now I'm going to be looking to get a little bit more aggressive because I see a crap ton of buyers here. My heart is sore that we didn't get involved in these buyers here because this is literally where we started looking for entries on this trade. This is so damn disappointing to see all of this. But nonetheless, we've got a level of structure here. We know that we can buy a little bit lower in the future. But if we just look at what's going on here, most recent price action on a four hour, I think four hour will just be a little bit more clear for us. Cool. Oh yes, we'll even have to go down to a one hour for this. But on a four hour, what we're noticing here is we're, we're just paying attention to the price action, right? We've got this momentum. We wanna trade in the direction of this momentum, hopefully. Cool, price action is not looking like we're ready to sell aggressively now because why? We can see we're selling, but we're breaking below structure, breaking back above. So corrective price action, breaking below more structure, breaking back above. So naturally I see corrective price action. I'm going to look for a corrective structure. In this corrective structure, I've got a level of structure over here that we've broken below and we've broken back above, right? On a four hour. So obviously at a future date in time, we can come back to retest this level of structure if we're going to, or at least for premium buy, we're going to retest the level of structure if there's going to be a good buy and we're still going to be buying. Otherwise, we don't usually go down on a four hour, but this setup would make sense on a four hour because my, I mean, on a one hour, sorry, my mistake on a one hour, because that's where I decided to highlight the POI because it just makes sense there. Nonetheless, there's our level of structure. There's our POI. Here's our first break of structure in the direction that we are looking to trade, which is up. We have momentum. We have a corrective structure. First touch, second touch, third touch that terminates where at our point of interest, will give us or be reason for us to try and find a bullish opportunity, hopefully in the direction of all of this momentum that we missed for the past like two months or one month or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I'm 100% bullish bias on New Zealand dollar CAD. While the structure looks like this, I'm gonna go on to New Zealand dollar USD because I don't wanna explain the high time frame structure. It looks almost exactly the same. Momentum, we can buy lower but there's momentum has been aggressive all this time, hasn't been giving us those entries, at least those deep pullbacks. So let's not expect a deep pullback now. Let's just follow through on what we've been seeing. Um, cool, level of structure that we've broken below, I guess twice that we could come back to retest in the future. We're still a little bit far, but nonetheless, we'll be safe tra trading where we see our momentum shift. It's quite far. Even if we were to isolate some sort of a corrective structure, it looks like maybe we'll miss it or whatever the case is. Maybe there might be an manipulation, but this is our premium buyer. This is where we see evidence of buyers. These buyers were able to break a level of structure. After we see these buyers, we see momentum slowing down. So all signs say, let's try and find the buying opportunity. Obviously, we'll wait for the structure to complete and give us an opportunity where our probabilities align. But nonetheless, we're nice and bullish for um, both New Zealand dollar CAD and New Zealand dollar USD. If you guys can see, these structures look almost exactly the same. So let's pay attention, watch both of them, but we're not going to trade and buy both of them because that just means that we're adding more risk onto these New Zealand dollar base pairs, which we don't want to do. Otherwise, let's move on. We are nice and bullish buys on both. NASDAQ, the last pair that we're going to have a look at for this evening's uh, weekly market forecast. This pair, I ask me why I'm bullish. I guess I'm bullish because I'm forcing being bullish, but it's going to require patience if I'm going to follow my plan to be bullish. And even if I want to be bearish, it's going to require patience for me following the plan. But we're not going to speak too much on the high time frame structure because we spoke about it last week. Let's just say that all we're doing is we're moving sideways. And the only way we can make sense of all of this chop that's happening right now is 
we trade the structures that form because these chart patterns, you guys can see that every chart pattern that's forming is giving us a sense of direction or giving us some sort of a directional bias at least. So let's continue to do that. Since we're moving sideways, we look at the structures, continue to follow the, I guess, just the structure and trade at momentum shifts and do what we've been doing. So most recently, obviously we see momentum to the downside. Yes, this momentum on a higher time frame failed to break structure. Yes, we failed to break the structure on a higher time frame. I get that, cool, there's buyers inside of here. But the most recent structure that was broken was to the downside, right? Where are we going towards? We're going towards some sort of a momentum shift. Nice big bearish engulfing. We see a bunch of sellers. The closer we get to there, the less I want to be a buyer. On a four hour, obviously we can see a momentum shift down low which is, you guys can see, a lot of patience is required from us to trade at our extremes because we want to be as safe as possible. We don't want to be caught inside some chop. Even if we were to go down to a one hour, you guys can see, yes, price action dubs, that's how I was saying that the news on these pairs just made things very complicated on NASDAQ and US 30 because we don't know whether this breaking below this level of structure here, we don't know whether this is just volatility or is this break and close below, break and close back above, a sign of corrective price action. It just complicated things to the next degree. But otherwise, what we see will always give us the best results over what we feel and think and hope and whatever the case is. What I see is price action moving to the downside. We're coming towards a momentum shift. The closer I get to this momentum shift here, the less I'm going to buy because we're coming towards resistance. For me to be a buyer, I guess since there's an ascending structure, I would have to want to buy at the 90% rule of the corrective structure because that's where this corrective structure would end. So I guess technicals just make sense that if I want to trade NASDAQ safely, let me trade the extremes. I am coming towards resistance, so it makes no sense to be a buyer at resistance either way. So we'll just see and react to the price action inside of this area. Does NASDAQ give us a sell? NASDAQ doesn't, then obviously the buy will only come for me with probabilities a lot lower, a lot lower. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's very, it's very uncomfortable <laughs> selling, selling these pairs now since we're seeing a whole bunch of upside momentum and whatever the case is. But looking at fundamentals, maybe, maybe, maybe let's just backtrack and say we, we're hundred percent done, guys. We're hundred percent done with the analysis. There is no more analysis that's going to happen after this. We've done the five pairs, but now we're just having a young talk before we call a session a session. But just looking, looking at fundamentals and all of those things. There's a lot that has been happening, and especially, guys, especially within the tech space. If you just maybe look back at last year and look at how many jobs, like all, all the whole of tech was firing people, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Literally, Amazon opened this year by firing another, I don't know how many, 10,000. I don't, don't remember the number, but Amazon literally opened the year by firing people. Does these companies trying to cut costs as to this degree, does this scream positivity in the market? Like just overall outlook, does that scream positivity? Like does that scream us going to hit new higher highs and all of this nice good stuff? I don't think so. So yeah, I'm very, I'm very, uh, a little bit cautious about being, being like maybe let's just say I'm a little bit cautious about swinging, swinging indices to the upside now. Let's just, be quick in and outs on whichever direction. Like, let's not look to, to, to ride the wave until, 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 because we, we're in a very weird environment right now where prices, like markets, what, what really matters in this environment is whether price moves up or down because people are just trying to make money. They, we just want to be right in the direction, right? Same way I'm making, trying to make money. There's other speculators that are trading with large volume that don't even care whether whatever's performing good or whatever, they just want to see price move up or down and they want to be in the right direction. That's the world we're trading in. So obviously, yes, we're including, we have our process so that we always reactive to the current price action so that we can, we can have some sort of an edge. But in terms of like the fundamentals that these indices have proven over a long period of time, I don't feel like we're in that same, that same period of time that Warren Buffett was buying and the same advice that was just buy and hold these indices for the rest of your life and you'll be a millionaire. I don't feel like we're in that environment where that type of decision-making is gonna be the most profitable type of decision-making, if I make a lot of sense. But otherwise, let's call it a session. 
conclusion being there's a lot of there's a lot that's going to happen a lot of volatility and a lot of confusion let's just trade the structures that we see to try and be as safest as possible at all times i'm 100% down guys let there be peace in the streets let our brothers and sisters be safe i'll see you guys in the discord server enjoy the rest of your guys evening cheers guys